Namaskar Venkat ji and welcome Namaskar. back. Namaskar. Thank you very much. We have already discussed with you introduction to our health, laying the groundwork for understanding the cause of illness, ailments and disease. And what is it that keeps our body the different elements, machinery, parts in balance? Are these wonderful enzymes we call hormones that are being secreted in our body, which are regulating a variety of functions, physiological functions, mental functions. So the hormonal balance is critical and hormones are also balancing another key component of our body, which is glucose that gives us energy. To have glucose balance is very important. The third pillar of good health is the balance maintained by microbes, which far exceed the number of our own cells in our body. So these three are the pillars, the foundation of good health. Any imbalance in these three leads to what we call disease, and that, that can have different names depending upon how it gets manifested in our body. There is a system which we are guided by, which helps us manage diseases. And unfortunately, it becomes something that happens that we are stuck with lifelong because we are given to understand that we cannot get rid of some of these conditions. However, the good news is, as you told us, Venkat Rao Karturi ji is, has been guiding us through this journey and he is doing so with a sound footing because he himself got rid of a variety of conditions including high blood pressure, heart enlargement, abdominal hernia, arthritis and as you can see he's not wearing eyeglasses. I am. He got rid of his and I am on my on the journey to get rid of mine now with his help and gallbladder stones. So these were some of the things that he got rid of very successfully by arming himself with the right knowledge. We've talked about imbalances. Today will be how to control, alt, and delete them. Yes, so welcome. Yeah, I want to start with the motivational message that there is no disease in the world which we cannot cure with knowledge. Maybe somebody else will give the knowledge available in so many ways. Now, uh, to get the definition of uh, health as per WHO, it is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. This is the very wide definition of health given by WHO. Now, I want to add to this functioning of the body at the highest level that genetic capacity of ours will allow. That is why people are even blessed saying that Shatashman Baba live for 100 years. So that genetic capacity is available with us. This is one definition of health. Second definition, we go into nutrition. This is as per biology. Very important definition people have to try to understand. The assimilation by living organisms of food materials that enable them to grow, to maintain themselves, and to reproduce. Now, nutrition here is not defined as per the, your balanced diet, carbohydrates, fats, etc. Is not the content, it is your assimilation. Goats eat balanced diet. How? By assimilating. By everything is manufactured, carbohydrates assimilated by them just by leaves. Now, human beings also have the capacity to assimilate from the food material whatever is needed by the body. It is not separately you supply some supplements, but now what happened? 
modern progress what is the progress towards health deterioration you call it progress but we have deteriorated our health we have made some really change in diet we have interfered with the environment and new pattern of behavior and lifestyle and that how we are choosing a disease again coming to diseases it is mind boggling to hear that there are 8000 diseases i can't believe it but they declare now one doctor for eyes one doctor for nose and one doctor for mouth and another doctor for hair and there are several doctors such now disease is only one it is mal functioning of cells i am not uh, in agreement with uh, this kinds different kinds of diseases we have a body the body is composed of organs organs are made by tissues and finally the cells each cell is the fundamental unit of the body so this mal functions because cell functions has the capacity to work as an independent unit it has an independent brain it has in itself dna what are the functions of the cell it makes structure to the body take nutrients from food converts into energy carry out specialized functions it contains hereditary material and can make copies of themselves so how the disease starts from the cell only two reasons one is the cells do not get everything they need that means they do not get the nutritious food second is they get poisoned by toxic substances now i want to concentrate on the second point how we are getting poisoned by toxic substances then we will be able to understand what is the right food we should take many people are rich now we can say most of us now suffer from affluent malnutrition caused by an expensive diet rich in calories and poor in nutrients this is called starvation on full stomach time and money are the driving forces now not health and nutrition the way we eat our foods even how we chew often prevents us from realizing the best nutrition even from good diets now coming to sugar sugar is a deadly virulent poison now white flour contains contributes to other causes of diseases like toxicity eating too much flour which has no fiber constipation hemorrhoids colitis rectal cancer any breads pastas cake cookies they all contain white flour pizzas breakfast cereals pastries burgers noodles etc i know a case of a, a child who used to take noodles as his breakfast because it requires only 2 minutes to make he suffered with colitis which could not be cured by any doctors then finally we made him come to natural foods that gave the uh, solution to him and frozen pizzas had 67 industrial and pesticide residues frozen chocolate cake contains 61 toxic residues milk chocolate had 93 peanut butter had a whopping 183 including highly carcinogenic aflatoxin which is produced by a mold that grows on peanuts Where i did you get this yeah, there is a, a one book excellent book uh, never be sick again wonderful information by a non doctor nice. yesterday i was confronted with a lady who got cancer and he told me i am a rich lady 
I have enough money, I can buy anything I want. Still, why did I get cancer? So I pointed out to all these things. These are all very expensive foods which get you expensive cancer disease. Then she agreed. <laughs> now coming to cooking oils. When oils are heated above 392 degrees Fahrenheit, and most supermarket oils are, the cis fatty acid molecules change shape, turning into a different and toxic category of fats called, you must have heard, trans fats. Is a, a highly uh, used word, trans fats. Yes. So now what my advice as per my experience is no refined oils to be used so bad it is not even cold pressed nowadays they get machines cold pressed yes rpm is very high rounds per minute they, they move no the moving like a bull driven uh, bull driven the rpm is very slowly they it, it, yeah method of extraction cold press the rounds per minute is very high advice but i go a little beyond this because even my own experience and which we use in our house i am suggesting i want to put a question which scientist has told you to use the oil seeds by removing the oil from it and the extract to throw it to the animals is a most unscientific thing. Nature has given us oil seeds to consume it in whole because it has cholesterol as well as anti cholesterol. Both are in sight. That is why I advise maybe I'm doing it. Use the oil seeds as powder. Suppose I give you two examples of groundnut. You make it powder, it will fry and make it powder. Keep it in a jar. Say same seeds also, you fry it and make it powder. Keep it one bottle, one jar on the dining table. And whenever it is possible, some other day, third day, you may take coconut peels. Uh, you take that, you take, use that as a, a powder or just peels. So this what we do is uh, when we uh, boil the vegetables, no uh, cooking with oils. Put this uh, powder in that, two spoons, three spoons as per your requirement. And it gives the oil, it adds to the taste of the sabji, and it is uh, not harmful as oil cooking. So those yes. people who do not have access to bull driven oils can actually do this. So they, because everybody can- suggest, Not access. Why should you use a bull driven oil? This is again a mistake. You are extracting the oil and you are uh, using the only the oil, the best part of it, throwing to the animals. I don't advise even bull driven. Maybe, uh, maybe an extreme case, but this is the most healthy thing. No, please tell me, why should we extract the oil from the oil seed? Mm -hmm. Who told you nature has given to use it as it is? It's not knowledge, it is ignorance to extract oil. You can make any food, any sabji, any tiffins, zero cooking oil, zero oil cooking it is called. He's a, he's a very popular cardiologist, worked in Ames, and then he gives all the methods of anything you make because oil it doesn't add to taste. The taste is added by the other things which you have put into that. But then I advise people to consume oil seeds in the form of powder to get the holistic benefit of oils. So you advised uh, making them into powder and then sprinkling it, not this whole seed. Sprinkling, yes, yes. Sprinkling it at the end, end. of the boiling. Yes. Yes. After. And if you, uh, if you want to add a little more taste, uh, the, the surface of the curd, no, what do you call this? We'll put a little bit, two, three spoons cream mm -hmm. and along with the, this powder, mix it well with the boiled vegetables 
and you will not eat any other sabji afterwards so, can can you uh, name some of the vegetables you have made like this whatever vegetables you are using for sabji okay. you have cut it and then make four five mixed yeah. boil them along with the two two mirchi mirchi yes whatever for hot spicy and one uh, pyaaz onion and pudina kothmira and those also you put it boil it just water. a little bit water little bit water and uh, that gets evaporated by the time it boils we go to the next topic very controversial topic okay what and, is that uh, milk milk yes i give the uh, all the scientific uh, reasons why we human beings should not drink animal milk we are not animals mother's milk is a perfect food for infants in nature no animal drinks milk after weaning nor does any species drink the milk of another species is clear so why we should not drink animal milk is uh, there are four reasons one reason is animal milk contains uh, such heavy hormones even the natural cow has hormones which are sufficient to make the calf grow big in 6 months and become mature at the age of 2 years and become pregnant by 2 and up you mentioned this last time also uh, that the calf is this the natural way it's that the calf matures so early yes natural way with its mother milk their life is short no they also mature early there is one enzyme we have in the human beings which gets switched off by the time of 3 years the lactase even if you drink milk the lactose cannot be absorbed by the body this is one scientific fact and third one the milk is pasteurized a heat treatment done to virtually all milk products to kill bacteria bacteria right. alters the physical and chemical properties of milk right it is not only less nutrients but creates toxins as well 48 hours after pasteurization you get the milk in plastic sachets so in all these ways milk is not to be consumed especially animal milk is not to be consumed by human beings to health problems you will face by drinking milk girls achieve uh, attain puberty at the age of 6 and up to 7 years hair over the face it is expressed in different ways in boys people say we get calcium in 1 liter of milk there is not more than 1 gram of calcium this we can get very naturally which we will advise a little later the animal milk you can consume in a different way like curd buttermilk ghee butter etc because it is fermented once the milk is fermented all these bad effects will go away now coming to the most uh, liked in the morning coffee that is roasted forms a compound called 3 4 benzopyrin a powerful carcinogen an average cup of coffee contains 500 micrograms of known carcinogens In 1981, Professor Brian McMahon of the Harvard School of Public Health concluded that coffee drinking was the cause of 50% of all the pancreatic cancers. The drinking three cups a day increased the risk of pancreatic cancer threefold. Caffeine is there even tea 
all those things which i am now telling i will give you the alternatives i will give you the alternatives yeah. i forgot to give you the alternatives to milk 10 badam you soak in the night Amen. and next day you peel them and then put it make pieces and put it in a jar and mixer and then put a little water and make badam milk and filter it and drink excellent excellent taste and uh, all the proteins that are, are uh, necessary they are available children like to drink it once you make it habit second one is coconut milk yeah. coconut milk is next to mother's milk as good as that even one coconut you can make 2 liters of milk you don't consume it concentrated make the children drink and everybody can drink it if anybody wants to try a little big process is sesame milk and millets which i am going to discuss all the millets soak them in water previous night next day you can extract milk but it is a little difficult process than the almond milk than the coconut milk now come to animal meat most of today's chickens are cage reared where they do not obtain the benefit of exercise or sunlight are fed nutritionally deficient processed chicken feed neither the meat nor the eggs of these unhealthy animals support healthy human life i am not giving all these details to highlight what are the wrong things we are consuming processed food so i call it factory food better no animals cook food they eat raw but why and how we human beings got into cooking the food is i have read somewhere a small story maybe history or story i don't know they say human beings were eating only leaves fruits etc maybe sometime they used to hunt the animals and eat but sometime they happened to see animals roasted in forest fire tasted the roasted animal one day so what happened is more tasty than the raw <laughs> raw meat then so very good we hunt the animals and roast them eat them they did stop there they said why not we roast the vegetables also this is how uh, the fire was used maybe i can't say it is wisely foolishly to kill everything i will give one small example the you make this sprouts no how do you make this sprouts sprouts are made uh, put in water soaked and the next day or a second day you get the life suppose you fry the seeds and try to soak them in water in how many years the plant will come up never. it will never come up you have killed the life in the seed this is what we are doing to all cooked food dehydrated canned frozen hydrolyzed hydrogenated this is all science <laughs> irradiated or otherwise modified we run the risk of being deficient in fundamental nutrients that are contained in only in the whole intact living cells of other organisms this is the mistake we do in processing food we must learn to count nutrients not calories the nutritionally deprived cooked and processed foods we eat today will damage your health tomorrow as well as our health of our unborn children yes i get into problems of treating pregnant ladies yes i am cautioning them why i have eaten well i have eaten rich food why i got a child of uh, uh, autism child or uh, some other deficient child and all that the mother's food is affecting the unborn children add to that the genes are passed on to the grandchildren in the years to come which means 
you are responsible for creating good children and good grandchildren also uh, getting a child is a natural process it is not a factory made process now we come to fruits fruits is also a very important topic so one thing we have to understand is fruits metabolism and cooked food metabolism are different they should be eaten alone which means at least a gap of one two hours afterwards after cooked food uh, we should take fruits or one hour two hours before food we can take fruits again the fruits are not to be mixed sour fruits with sweet fruits because they have a different type of enzymes uh, acid fruits with the sweet fruits should not also see one more caution i give you is the fruit should be seasonal season gives the fruit that is required for the body and also fruit should be local not should be imported from different countries the content is different and then they are stored mangoes come only in summer they can be absorbed properly only in summer now over here especially you know people are losing track of this knowledge is going away which fruits are available when this has been recent now fruits are available all kinds of fruits are available all through the year they are not suitable to the body and they will do harm to the body then help to the body why do you get a jet lag from from going india to america that is the see there is a change in the climate there is a change in the circadian rhythm there is a change in the day and night that's why your body takes some time similarly your body cannot get adjusted to imported and fruits which are grown in different areas you should consume those fruits which are locally available and the seasons when they come naturally so we go to the next item digestion starts in the mouth chewing food is very very important whatever food you eat if you do not chew and masticate your food and make it liquid in the mouth it will not give the 100% benefit to you and in fact it is a waste it is a waste of time eating food gulping food people say why i am getting uh, acidity gas main reason is your acidity and gas if you properly chew it nobody will get gas nobody will get acidity because when you masticate uh, chew the food the saliva contains four enzymes which will neutralize the acids in the stomach you are not giving that uh, opportunity for the food to mix like that that's why you get acidity gas and then again so many other things will come poorly digested putrefying fermenting rotting food particles in the intestines create vast amounts of toxins please note toxins we are manufacturing ourselves by the way we eat undigested food molecules can pass through intestinal walls and they move directly into the blood stream also in the blood stream the body recognize these foods as food molecules as foreign the immune system may attack them now please please note 50% of the people now are suffering from what is this auto immune diseases what is this wonder i get shocked when you say you get an auto immune disease that means your immune system is attacking yourself how do you make it that way you are harming yourself may not be with a knife but as bad as that now coming to the next topic exposure to toxins i just want to give you the items breakfast cereal made of how that parcel is preserved with chemicals toothpaste five chemicals are there shampoos soap perfume deodorant hair dyes are cancering causing cancer newspapers print that also 
is a toxin when you touch it. Exhaust fumes, carpets, new mattresses, dry cleaning. I got a case of one person affected by newly painted house. So much fumes they are getting. He went to all doctors, could not find out what is the disease. Finally, it was uh, located that the paints have given such a smell. Uh, lungs are spoiled with the paints. So now what is the alternative, you may ask me. Suppose you have to use a toothpaste. You don't use a toothpaste if you are in India in a village. Use a neem stick. Neem stick gives you one brush if you crush it. It gives you two tongue cleaners if you remove it. And the paste is already in the juice. And when you do it in five minutes, ten minutes like that, it sends the juice inside also some of it. It activates a pancreas. Nobody gets diabetes when they use neem stick as a brush. All in one. We left and right, we have neem, neem trees in India. Fortunate we are. Every community should make it, you know, dharam, that this we have to grow. You know, wherever in the public spaces, right? Just grow them to basically yes. plant neem tree, plant people tree, plant karang. I will tell you the economics of neem tree. It costs, uh, it gives you a worth of 50 lakhs. I will tell you how. Neem tree, there is nothing waste. Leaves are used. The flowers are used for making some chutney. We do it in Ugadi, the first day of the year. Also, the bark is a medicinal. And it gives oxygen worth 50 lakhs of rupees in its 100 years lifetime. See the value of neem tree. And also, similarly, there are other leaves. A people tree. In India, you may be seeing these trees are devata trees, angel trees. They worship them. These trees are giving extreme health to people. If you are not able to get neem stick, you go for making your own by charcoal, etc. Even that is not possible. Go for Ayurvedic tooth powder or Ayurvedic paste. Uh, don't use plastic brush. Plastic brush, the micro particles of plastic go inside. Your brush will be your middle finger, which is very long, and use that tooth powder or toothpaste with this, and use a steel tongue cleaner, not plastic tongue cleaner. Perfumes, bundle wood, excellent natural. All flowers gives. Earlier they used to make perfumes from, direct from flowers. No shaving cream is required. If you just, uh, if you can get, just apply a little water two, three times or a little buttermilk we apply. Skin is the most sensitive part of the body. We have to take care of it. So, yes. so far I have given uh, the wrong way of using things. Only to educate. And all these have alternatives and substitutes. You have to enjoy tasty food. You have to enjoy nutritious food. This is ultimately the purpose of eating food. Now I think I stop. You said that you will uh, point a way to how to get rid of coffee addiction. What is that way for people who are yes. addicted to coffee? Yeah, so, kasha, I will suggest you some kashayas. Kashayas means you get afraid. Decoctions of leaves. Yeah. Tea, tea comes from leaves, but instead of using tea leaf, we use other leaves which are useful to us, which will not only not add toxins, but add to your health by removing toxins from the body. One week or two weeks, you stop having milk in that. Take that black tea or whatever it is. You get habituated. Okay. Now, second week, Instead of sugar, you add palm jaggery. And uh, after that, fourth week, you take tulsi leaf or uh, pudina leaf. You call it not mint, uh, mint leaves. Uh, excellent tea, excellent smell will come. You enjoy it and you take any number of times in a day. When you substitute anything, 
bad thing, substitute bad thing with a good thing, then the body accepts, the mind accepts. And slowly, gradually, it has to be done. All right. Thank you so much, Venkanji. You know, all of this that you're sharing, you personally used that knowledge you used first on yourself. You applied that. You made a transition into good habits from bad habits. And now you are sharing that wealth of wisdom, that knowledge gained from personal experience. It is not a secret. I have not patented it. <laughs> yes. But you all have to wait for this sharing of knowledge at yes. the end of all interviews because I used five systems, not one. We are dis discussing only nutrition now. We are going to discuss yoga. We are going to discuss about Ayurveda. We are going to discuss about acupressure. We are going to discuss about naturopathy, nature cure. All these systems, when they are over, at the end, I will give my secret. Yes, thank you. I will divulge my secret. And the, the okay. good thing is, amazing is, is, look, we have so many, we have so many pathways, you know, already designed yes. over these thousands of years they have developed and therefore us to use for our benefit. And why should we not? Why yes. Should we, not? We, we must, right? If it brings exactly. us good health, exactly. happiness, joy, look at you yes. smiling and happy and healthy now in a position to help <laughs> others also each of us can become like that 